Hello all. Welcome to the demonstration of Great HR's PMS module. This module is designed based on MBO method, management by objectives. So here we have scope to measure goals, all the quantitative parameters which defines the performance of the employees, and competencies which are qualitative. Under competencies, it could be behavioral or job-specific competencies. It could be core values of the organization or leadership skills of the managers. And we also have scope to ask any open-ended questions where employees can answer in text. These questions could be introspective or feedback-based. To start with, what we see on the screen is an employee login the ESS of PMS module. By clicking on My PMS, employee will land into the goal page where we have various options to set the goals. So as a first step in performance management, goal setting can happen. Either the employee can set their goals and take approval from the managers or managers can set the goals for the team members. For which we have this plus icon here click on that and the options available are disclosed here. The first option is personal goal, which allows us to type or copy paste the goal. For example, implement PMS module, say by February 2024. This could be one of the goal and we'll have to select the category of the goal if you're using balance scorecard categories, you can select from the list or you can customize your own categories. Then we'll have to add more descriptions under more option to elaborate more on the goal statement. We'll have to define how the outcome is measured. This particular example of implementing PMS module by a given timeline, that being a project, the expectation is to get it completed by 100%. However, some goals can have target metrics. So in such cases, we'll have to add the target metric. For example, for a trainer conducting 20 number of trainings, could be one of the uh, smart goal for the quarter. Likewise, you can define any target number. The metric is a text field. You can add any metric and define the weightage. In your organization, if you do not follow weightages, for the goals, we can disable this section. And these are the parameters that we will need to create a goal. And the other options are, you can set up a goal library of your own based on various departments, designations of your organization. The identified goals can be uploaded from this list. Employees or managers can select the relevant goals and assign it to a goal page. The third option is the software comes with a default set of goals for various departments and designation. You can utilize this repository. There's also an option to upload the goals. Here, in scenarios where the list of goals is too long and you do not want to personally type or select from a list, you can upload it using a template. There's also option for cloning. This option helps us in uploading the goals or in cloning the goals from previous quarter to next quarter or previous year to next year. After cloning, you can always edit the goals if required. So in any which ways, once the goals are created or assigned, we can see all the goals being listed here. In this particular example, we have some goals under financial, some under customer-centric category, and some under KRAs. As I mentioned earlier, if you're not using balance scorecard methods, we cannot ignore the balance scorecard categories and create all the goals under one section called KRA or objectives. So the bold statement here is the KRA, and the statement below is the description of the KRA. The numbers indicate the weightage of the goal, and the goals can be tracked throughout the year for the progress so as to take corrective actions. And 
give an opportunity for employees to improvise, prioritize, and support the employee if any bottleneck conditions arise. So we call this as continuous performance management for which the tool provides three options. One is called the picking. At regular intervals, we encourage employees to visit the tool sheet and mention the current achieved numbers or progress percentage. Let's say at the end of the first month, the employee has achieved 50 out of the target, which is 500 for the year. And they can attach a document, write a note to substantiate this check-in. So there's navigation button to uh, navigate between the goals and update the progress. Once such an update comes from employee, this will be automatically notified to the managers. The manager can visit the same goal page of the employee and take corrective actions. If any particular goal is behind or at risk, there is inbuilt chat platform for communication. This is bi-directional chat platform where employee and manager both can exchange performance related dialogues. So for example, employee can mention that this goal is delayed as there is a dependency with the finance team for the budget. So manager can understand this dependency, help the employee overcome by getting the budget approval. And this way, the team is progressing towards the goal. And this can eliminate surprises at the end of the year that a particular goal was not met. And the reason was, uh, was a dependency with someone else. And there's this third option called IDP. This option will allow managers to give upskilling suggestions. So here, uh, to increase the number of sales, the manager wants the employee to learn this particular module so as to uh, improvise the demonstration skills and solutioning ability. So uh, there is a time frame given by the manager saying in one month, the employee will have to learn the PMS module of Grade HR. And at the end of this time period, the manager can rate the employee for the observed improvisation. Likewise, we can have multiple IDPs assigned so as to continuously upskill the employee and make them enabled to perform better on each of their goals. So this is a continuous process. The interval of CFR, check-in, and IDPs can be decided by the teams based on business requirements. At the end of the year, the HR will have to initiate the assessment, and that's when the self-assessment button will appear to employee and a notification will be triggered. At this point in time, employee can check in their final numbers. Say it could be 450 out of 500, attach a document, and check in. And that will auto-calculate a rating based on the predefined rating scale by the HR. So here in this case, 90% achievement is considered or anything above 80 is considered to be a five rating. We can also bring in rating titles like needs improvement, exceeds expectations and so on. So please let us know your rating scale will help you configure the same. By giving self rating on each of the goals, employee can also write their review comments. And now we move to the competence section here as well. Employees can give self-rating for all the predefined competencies and answer the open-ended questions and submit the self-assessment. The flow will reach the immediate reporting manager of the employee. Let's now log in as a manager of this particular employee. The system will auto-trigger a notification asking the manager to assist this employee for the same set of performance parameters. So this being the manager login, under my PMS, manager can see his own set of goals and submit the self-assessment. And under team's PMS, manager can see, visit, add goals, write CFR, assign IDPs throughout the year. And at the end of the year, when the self-review is completed, we can see the manager review is pending. So we select this employee, and review as a manager. The same set of goals will appear. On the left-hand side, we see employee self-rating, which cannot be edited. 
On the right hand side, we see manager's ratings. A manager can also write any review comments or feedback. Likewise, on competency sections as well, there's manager review option. We see employee answers for the open-ended questions. And for managers, we can ask any uh, questions. Uh, we can ask promotion recommendation, hike recommendations, and so on. Because this tab is always kept confidential from the employee. And a PMS report or a scorecard is auto-generated by the software where we see for each of the goals and competency that is defined, we see employee self-rating out of five, manager's rating out of five, and employee comments, if any, manager comments, and any IDPs assigned with observed improvisation ratings. The weightage of the particular goal is multiplied by the rating given by the manager to arrive at weighted ratings. And the overall performance score of this employee is the weighted average of all the defined parameters. In this case, the overall score is 73.99 out of 100 or a 3.7 out of 5, which the manager can submit to a next level manager for approval. So we have various configurations at this stage. We can allow the next level manager, that is skip manager, to agree with the ratings and up to it or reject the ratings. The second option is we can allow the skip man level manager to give new assessment to the same set of parameters of the employee. The third option is we can directly allow the skip level manager to edit the ratings given by the previous manager. You can choose the workflow that is suitable for your organization. Once this process is completed and the approvals have come in from the skip level manager, the next step would be one-to-one -one meeting. So we will approve as a skip manager now. So all the requests which are waiting for approval will sit in approval tab of every skip manager. Here we can see employees rating is requested to be approved by the manager of this employee. The summary ratings are visible here. As a skip manager, I can up to reject or by clicking on view, I can also edit the ratings. So I'm approving. While approving, if you wish to bring multiple other levels of approvals, you can send it to another level or approve and close the workflow. Currently, I'm approving to close the workflow. There is multi-selection, multi-approval rejection options available. In case the skip manager has many employees to approve the reviews for. Post which, as I mentioned, one to one meeting has to be conducted where employee and the manager can discuss the improvement points, training requirements, and uh, resetting the goals for the next year and so on. The points discussed in the one to one meeting need to be mentioned in the software and the one to one meeting comes and submit the notes. On submission, the manager can digitally sign off the ratings and disclose it to employee. If you do not wish to disclose the ratings to employee immediately, as a HR, you can set the configurations on when you wish to disclose the ratings. Also, there is option for the HR admin to edit the ratings at the, the overall level, at the organization level, to match the bell curve requirements. And that process is called normalization. You can utilize a normalization feature to normalize the bell curve and disclose the normalized ratings to employee. Utilize the same for appraisal calculations. The next step in appraisal is a manual step where we'll have to convert the ratings into any component related to performance. So we extract the overall PMS report HR can extract the reports for entire organization and managers can extract the reports for their immediate team. This report will uh, give us a consolidation of all the employees' performance scores. So we see employee basic information like employee name, ID designation, employment status, department reporting manager. 
We do not disclose the salary here for IS reasons. Role, project, work location will be available, date of joining, which your goal plan, the report belongs to, and when did we conduct the report? What is the workflow status? So here it says one-to-one -one meeting communication is completed. And for the objective section, that is goal section, we see employee self-rating out of five, out of 100, any title like needs improvement and so on. Manager's rating out of five, out of 100, and any manager comments. The rating scale, as I mentioned earlier, is completely configurable. You can choose one to four rating scale, one to 10 or one to six and so on. The overall performance is nothing but the skip level manager's approved ratings. So this is the final performance score of the employee, which you will have to export into an Excel and use it for compound calculations. So for the same, we provide condition-based formula templates. So when we extract the reports, we have ratings out of five, out of 100. We'll have to convert that into high percentage or incentive by using any condition-based formulas. So this particular template says, any employee falls between three to four rating is entitled for an 8% hike. The numbers can be tweaked according to your management decision. Once we apply the formula to all the employees, we arrive at the hike percentages. We can simply upload this back into the payroll module to revise the salaries of the employees. If it is a one-time payment, like incentive or bonus, we can schedule the payouts in the, perform uh, in the payroll module. We also have letter generation module in the core grade HR application, which will allow us to generate promotion and hike letters and send it to ESS portal of the employee for download or attach it as a mail and send it to employee's email ID. With this, I've completed the core PMS workflow. If in your organization, the PMS workflow or the form is slightly different from the standard workflow that I have showcased, please reach out to us. We have various other configurations and settings to help you and support the form that you are currently following. Thank you all for your time. Have a great day.